thank God for the blessed opportunity which he has given us this morning, for the grace which he has bestowed upon us to come into the house and to worship him in spirit and in truth. Thanking God for the time of singing as well. Before we enter into our individual worship, let's open our Bibles to John's Gospel. John's Gospel, Chapter 3. Reading all together, a few verses here. <clears throat> 14, 15, and 16 all together. John's Gospel, Chapter 3. 14, 15, and 16. And Moses lifted up the, up the serpent in the wilderness. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Numbers 21. Reading all together, verse 9. Numbers 21 and verse 9 all together. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it on a pole, and it came to pass that it is a serpent had bitten any man. When he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. A gracious Heavenly Father, gracious God, wonder-working Father, Lord, I thank thee for the opportunity which thou has granted us, Lord, as a church to come into your presence, Lord, to worship, to glorify, to adore thee, Lord, as we are going to, Lord, meditate on your word, speak to me, speak to every one of us, Lord, whoever is sitting here, Lord, from your heavenly throne of grace, Lord, help me to get connected, Lord, to your heavenly throne, Lord, that your word come with power and authority, every need may be met, Lord. And also, Lord, we pray, Lord, that we must worship thee in spirit and in truth. We bind the powers of darkness in the name of Jesus. We loose it all. Grant us grace. Committing this time into your loving and caring hands and pray this prayer in the highly exalted name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the most quoted verse in the Bible, John 3, 16, the most translated scripture portion in from Genesis to Revelation, John 3, 16. Every sermon of a gospel, either in the church or in the streets, anywhere, we quote this verse of John 3.16. What is that specular thing of John 3.16? Let's try to glean this morning from the word of God, like what God wanted to speak to us this morning from John 3.16. When we start the chapter of John, third John, uh, John's gospel, chapter 3 also, God meets a Pharisee and a rabbi. And he starts sharing about the salvation, about the good news, how a man should be born again. In the third chapter, in the third verse, moving on to the fifth and sixth verse. And that doesn't continue, that doesn't stop there, but he continues with the plan of the heavenly God coming into this world. In the verse seven, six, uh, 14, 15, and 16, we say, as the Moses has lifted up the servant in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. This gospel is not for only the individual like Nicodemus, but for the whole humanity. In the scripture also, when we see <coughs> about the cross here, every chapter, every book in the Bible denotes about the cross of Christ. In the book of Genesis, we see that in the book of Genesis chapter 22, the death of Isaac reminds about the cross. He reminds about the cross there saying that how Isaac is going, how Isaac was laid up on the altar. One day it is eminent that God is going to lay his only son upon the cross of Calvary, upon the altar. And it does not continue, it does not stop there, but it still continues moving forward. In the book of Exodus chapter 12 also, we see that the Paschal lamb being slain there, and the blood which is applied on the doorpost, which symbolizes the cross, the exodus begins there. The forgiveness of the sinful humanity through the lamb continues there. And further on in the book of Leviticus also, we see different altars, different offerings there, peace offering, burnt offering, 
everything denotes to the sacrifice of lord jesus christ in one way or other and moving on to the book of numbers we see that christ was crucified as the uh, as the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness even so must the son of god be lifted up and this denotes that everywhere god wanted to make a provision for the human mankind to be saved why should man be saved and we see these things in <coughs> uh, let's try to glean from numbers uh, chapter 21 also few things like what actually this chapter talks to us this is the uh, chapter which star uh, which continues the journey the to just give a background about this chapter when we see this chapter also we see that there were like 12 uh, spies which were sent there were like two spies which bring good news and there were like 10 spies who bring the bad news we see this in the later earlier chapters of numbers and because of those 10 unbelieving people like the spies who could not break the good news having seen god's faithfulness he reroutes them saying that uh, i'm going to perish them in the wilderness and this chapter starts in such way that they came back to the red sea again when we start the earlier verses also we see that the red sea and also god makes another way for them it's not a long journey for them from egypt to <coughs> canaan but because of their unbelief because of their unbelieving nature god reroutes them so in this passage this morning i wanted to glean about the four important things one is about the sinful human mankind the judgment of god the justification towards the human mankind and moving on to the the replacement as the christ for our a pascal lamb and also the fourth one is the salvation of god when we see in the verses here as well uh in the verse fifth verse also 21 and 5 i wanted to read it for you and the people spake against god and against moses where he has brought us up out of the egypt to die in the wilderness for there is no bread neither there is any water for our soul lothe this light bread they starts grumbling they start grumbling and this grumbling continues from the time they have exodus they started coming out of the land of egypt also the grumbling is one of the most biggest sin in our life also having seen the god's faithfulness having seen the god's leading in our life how many times do you want to say that is god really true in my life is god really going to do something in my life this is the same nature of the egyptians god could bring out the egyptian through 10 miracles over a night but he could not bring that egypt out of them in our life also how many times we start grumbling towards god this is the same nature titus writing these things also about the disobedient things titus chapter 3 and verse 3 also we see if somebody can read for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish disobedient deceiving serving diverse lust and pleasure living in malice and envy hateful and hating one another i wanted to draw your attention towards the disobedient thing when the episode goes on with the disobedience of the israeli uh, israelites also in the wilderness here titus reminds us we ourselves were also sometimes foolish and disobedient we were disobedient unto that heavenly thing that disobedient began from the book of genesis itself god wanted not to eat that forbidden fruit but there we see that the disobedient begin and the disobedient continues to the 6th chapter of genesis in 6 and 6 we see that god was grieved in his heart he was grieved it repented the lord that it made the man on the earth and it grieved himself at his heart and also in the later verses we see the first instance of grace there that is what beautifully uh, peter writes in first peter chapter 3 and verse 20 we see these things 3 and 20 if somebody can read this yeah thank you ana <coughs> so which sometimes were disobedient once long suffering of god the long suffering of god continues there and waited in the days of noah while the ark was preparing 
wherein few for his eight souls were saved by the water and this day when we see not only god wanted to throw away this earth bring the wrath upon this earth not through water but through fire this day when the uh, the church preaches about the good news as well there is nobody who wanted to give an ear to what is the good news but here we see that in the long suffering of god waited the disobedient people but yet the long suffering of god it continues the long suffering of god and this long suffering god when we see in the book of numbers as well there in the 21st chapter also we see in the verse the therefore the people in the 7th verse 21 and 7 numbers therefore the people came to moses and said we have sinned for we have spoken against the lord and against the pray for the lord that he might take away the serpent from us and the moses prayed for the people when we see they started grumbling god introduced fiery serpents into their midst when he started putting those fiery serpents into this midst they remembered about god but what about our life did god allow those circumstances in our life because of our sinful nature no because his grace still abounds in our life his grace still abounds and here we see there is a man called moses who is trying to be a mediator between the people and god when we see in the book of uh, uh, tight uh, first corinthians uh, in the book of uh, first peter 3 and 20 titus uh, first peter 3 and 20 if somebody can help me read sorry first timothy 2 and 5 Yes, here the man Moses was the mediator here. He started taking the news to God and God told him, this mediator is Lord Jesus Christ coming into the New Testament. He died for us. In the 2 and 5 we say, in the 2 and 5 we say, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ. The lost man to be restored to, God himself became the mediator is not God greater than Moses who has died upon the cross of Calvary for the sake of us who has shed his precious blood when we were yet sinners he died when people came to Moses he pleaded but what about us we did not come to Christ we were alien foreigners we were gentiles but yet in his love in his grace in his mercy he sought us we see this in romans chapter 8 and 5 and 8 romans 5 and 8 if somebody can read Christ died for us. Thank you, sister. So <clears throat> we see here 5 and 8. God commanded his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. There we see that Christ, Moses, received the information to go to God. But in my life, in our life, we did not come to God because we do not know. We are Gentiles, foreigners. No way we are allowed to come into the presence of God. But while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That mediator who came into this world to offer himself upon the cross of Calvary. The judgment which we, which we need to accept, which needs to fall on us, it fell on Christ himself. When we see that the judgment here in the 21st chapter of Numbers as well, there were fiery serpents. There was death prevailing in that camp. When the death was prevailing, people understood and came to Moses. But in my life and in our life, for the sinful nature we had, for the wrath which needs to come on us, he put it on Christ. When Christ takes that blood into the most holy place, he says that these people have sinned. And because of the sinful nature, I have taken my blood as a propitiation to come into the presence. If he is looking at us, he is looking through the lens of Christ, through the blood of Christ, that we might be brought into the saving grace of his son, Lord Jesus Christ. This is the whole plan from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. 
God wanted to serve his people for himself through one channel or other. He raised up few people, few prophets, few people from the Old Testament, New Testament to bring this good news. The first one is the salvation. When we were dead in our sins and trespasses, when we were away from God, when we do not know God, he came and sought. When we were dead in our sins and trespasses, he sought us. He not only sought us, but he was offered himself upon the cross. He has died, he has paid that penalty for the sake of you and me. And that does not discount, that does not stop there, but moving on to the other verses also. Hebrews 9 and 12, if somebody can read those verses. Eternal redemption. <coughs> he did not take the go blood of goats or bulls. In the Old Testament, when we see it is the blood of goats or maybe bulls, but here we see he has taken his own blood into the holy place to obtain redemption. You and me are the redeemed people this morning. We are no more the Gentiles. We are no more under the wrath of God. We are no more under the curse of God. But through Christ, through the blood of Christ, we are redeemed. When we were dead in our sins and trespasses, he has redeemed us through his blood. Not only he has redeemed us, but he has become our propitiation. 1 John 4 and 20, if somebody can read. Yes, here we see that <clears throat> the love of God, if any man, I love God, one second, if any man seen. Okay, let's read uh, Hebrews 2 and 14. Sorry, I got the wrong verse. Yes. So here I wanted to draw your attention to that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil. So if we see in the book of Numbers also, 21st chapter also, there was a brazen serpent which was erected there. And upon the brazen, uh, upon the cross, upon the cross, we see a brazen serpent. What is that serpent speaks about? The serpent speaks about the deceiving nature of Satan. From the book of Genesis in the third chapter also we see that the Satan was beguiled there and it came and it has deceived there. And the serpent here speaks about the satanic nature. And also the brass speaks about the judgment of God. The brass speaks about judgment in the New Testament and also in the New Old Testament. So he has taken the judgment upon that cross. As the serpent was lifted up, so also the Son of Man was lifted up. He has taken the, the deceiving nature of Satan and also the judgment upon the cross because of you and me. Why did he take? He wanted to destroy it once for all. In the book of Genesis chapter 3 and 15 also we see. <clears throat> 3 and 15 we see. I, put, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his head. And this is the promise which God has given. He shall bruise the head. That is what we see in uh, Hebrews 2 and 14 also. If somebody can read it again. For Hebrews. as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Yeah, he wanted to destroy. What he wanted to destroy? Through the death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. He wanted to destroy the power of death. And that doesn't, that doesn't stop there. In the previous days also, we started looking about the Easter, right? About the Good Friday and the Easter. What is that which God has done? He has destroyed the powers of enemy on the cross. And that doesn't stop there. 
and after easter there is resurrection the resurrection sunday and doesn't stop there the resurrection still continues to ascension and that ascension doesn't stop there in the acts of the apostle first chapter we see as i was ascended so also i will come down and it doesn't stop there but it continues that god has been seated upon the right hand of god this is the heavenly plan of god in the ephesians second chapter also we see he has made us to sit in the heavenly places right christ himself first went to that heavenly place to be seated there and that doesn't stop there he is coming back again that is the greatest hope that the world doesn't have this day that once we are caught up once we are dead in this world that we are going to be seated out, seated with christ in the heavenly places and he is going to come back that is the greatest hope which the church has today we come into the house of god not only to worship him because of our forgiven sins but for the redemption work for the propitiation work and not only that but the greatest hope that he we are going to sit with him one day and we are going to rule this earth and that coming of god is very evident he is going to come back one day or other for sure and this god who has promised as he went he is coming back as we see the coming of the lord is very near very near with this i wanted to end the sermon as we see there are lot of things going on across the globe lot of things at a blinking of an eye the church will be caught up and the worship which we do here it is going to be continued in that heavenly kingdom and we do not know when that twinkling is going to come we see there are lot of drones going across from hamas to israel we see about these things in news there are lot of middle eastern countries raising against the israelites there are troops getting ready to fire against this god's chosen people and there will be one person in the globe who is going to stand up who is going to stand up and say i'm going to make peace and the whole world is going to listen to him that is none but the antichrist himself he is going to stand up he is going to make peace there he is going to say that this is going to be and whole the european the nations the russian kingdom the northeastern part of the america and also the ussr everything they are going to oblige to him that is where we are going to see that is where we are going to see that the coming of the lord is evident and the coming of the lord is evident and we worship him in spirit and in truth in the kingdom in the kingdom which is going to come and this is just a preview of what we are worshiping that god this is just a preview of what the glory is going to be there this is just a starting position of everybody's life that what the kingdom is going to be about the very first thing in the numbers we saw about the fiery serpents the fallen nature the egyptians who grumbled in our life also and the work of salvation who became our redemption who became our sacrifice who became our propitiation and that doesn't go back there but he started the whole work of the cross he died he was buried he conquered sin satan and death so that he might completely destroy the works of satan he went he's coming back it is evident may god give us grace this morning to worship him in spirit and in truth